We talk football and current events Sitting and chatting with the very best guest We're two Scottish boys and we're loving death So if you like witty banter Check the former number one podcast on iTunes Sitting and chatting Hello and welcome back to the Sit and Chat podcast on the invite. Jamie Allen. Java, good to see you on a surprisingly sunny and bright day in bonnie old Scotland. It's awfully dull with the now, but aye, it's, uh, it's been nice today. It's been nice. Took the dog for a walk. That was uh, always, no my dog, my wee cousin's dog. That's what I say. Um, <laughs> I don't know your parrot changed there. <laughs> um, I went around and took the dog a walk for a uh, well, she's at work. Um, so yeah, that was good. It was nice and sunny the whole time through. It's yeah. a cold wind, but yeah, I fucking deal with it. To be expected in Scotland, you know. Just, just get on with it. Winds are great again, as you can see. Got a haircut finally. Loving my life. I had to wait a hundred plus days since my last one, so it was nice to get a trim. Was, uh, you know, so I didn't even notice it. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You love the mohawk. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Do you love the mohawk? <laughs> it's, a, it's a terrible, terrible idea. But, uh, you know. <laughs> I knew you would be a fun. <laughs> uh, I mean, um, I'll tell you what, right? I was up. I was up at eight for, I mean, that's obviously a normal time for most folk, but I was there at the show for half eight thinking, you know, uh, that there'll probably be a queue outside sort of thing, like they'll want me to wait till nine, something like that. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, the show was entirely full when I got there. <laughs> Aye. Was it? Because also I went on the day when I found open, but I thought sort of most people would have committed to the whole, uh, you know, get their partner to do it or just shave themselves maybe. But, you know, clearly I was wrong. Clearly they were out in force hoping to get a haircut. Aye, you were wrong. Uh, I wasn't waiting too long, so it wasn't too bad. You know, not all of us have cousins that have done fucking hair tutorial <laughs> courses on YouTube. <laughs> no, she had you as a hairdresser. <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, she's a she's not barber right enough. She just does kind of woman stuff. But you know, yeah, I'm flamboyant, I'm flamboyant enough. Your haircut. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm flamboyant enough for that, you know. So. You are you are absolutely not flamboyant. <laughs> you are the most unflamboyant bloke uh, I've ever met. Yes, I don't know what you're talking about. The most unflamboyant bloke ever. You know, I've got sass and abundance. I love you, you know. <laughs> Where do you want to start then? Do you want to start with upbeat topics or not so nah, much? No, nah, no, we start, we start low and work our way up. Start uh, low and work our way up? Aye, aye, of course, right. Okay. Uh, you know, well, to be torrid situation that you, you most of us in the UK anyway at least woke up to this morning. Oh, I uh, thought you were talking about the other story that you're on. No, 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 no. We, we, go, we go deep. We go low and then we work our way up. Um... Welcome to Sun and Chat. Ah, yeah, yeah, of course. So stay tuned for for the good stuff, you know. Mm. Um, Prince Philip, or the Duke of Edinburgh, whatever you want to call him, died at the age of 99. It's a shame they never quite got the 100, unfortunately, only a few months away. Uh, It's a a, a tough one. You know, it's a bit mad, the whole situation. You knew in and out of hospital towards the end there. Uh, it was only like a matter of time, but he was hoping he was going to get to the 100 and get his wee letter off his, his wife and then pop his clogs that time, you know? He hoped she would have delivered that ham posted as well. Uh, exactly, yeah. Think. But no, I've seen, um, I seen the kind of, you know, the emergency fourth, what would it's called? I can't even remember what it's called. It's like fourth bridge or something. So mm. that's what happens when, like, he dies. Yeah. So, like, protocol dictates when the Queen dies, it's, it's called, like, emergency London Bridge or something, and then there's, like, okay. loads of stuff that happens, so, like, flags get lowered halfway down, so all flags across the country get lowered to halfway down, where everybody takes a day off work for the funeral, just loads of stuff when the Queen dies, and it's the same for um, Philip, and there was, so basically tomorrow the flags will be lowered halfway down. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. There's loads of other stuff as well, though. Like, he gets taken to the Mad Chapel in London and he's led to, led to rest well, um, Westminster Abbey. No, it's a different one. It's a private one because he, he didn't want that. He didn't want the part where the public could see, like, go pay the respects. He wants a private one. Uh, so, uh, there's loads of random stuff. So, I found it dead interesting that there's protocols for when, you know, people like that, you know, die. But um, it's obviously a shame to, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do want to say as well, I mean, I've made it obvious on my time during the podcast, I'm not the biggest fan of the royal family. I know, obviously, they do have their uses and they do have their purposes. Um, I just think, but I just think, obviously, you know, it's not my kind of thing. However, that's no taking away, you know, a life has been lost. It doesn't matter how old the person is, you know, and, you know, credit to him. Even at an old age, he was still, you know, making public appearances you know, pre-COVID and all that. So, yeah, of course, I'll pay my respects and, you know, wish him and his family all the best. I don't want to see any ill harm come to the people. And I think that's potentially an important thing to remember as well, even if you're no a fan of said person, providing they've done nothing wrong, which, you know, there's been no evidence that he has done, then, you know, there's nothing wrong with just, you know, wanting the best for family and hoping everything's okay with them. Bye. So that's kind of the... You know, the first and low part of our segments to come. Uh, but no, it's, it's you know, you had to talk about it. It's, yeah, no, it's, big, mean, for, it's big for the uh, UK. I mean, in a weirdly lucky way, it happened, obviously, like just before the podcast, because obviously if we chat about it next week, it'd be, you know, a bit out of date by that sort of point. But it's good that we can come on now and sort of say, you know, all right, mm. to the boy. Oh, yeah, this easy ocean. Mm. Effectively. Yeah, so then do you want to go into the next depressing topic? <laughs> Aye, go for it. Lead us in, get us, get us pumped up a bit. Well, it was actually you that reminded me. I completely forgot about it. So obviously, I think am I right in thinking that it's the whole Rangers thing that sparked this? The whole uh, yes and no. <coughs> so teams like Brentford and Swindon and stuff uh, started it before us, but we kicked the motion. Right. Uh, so obviously. Weeks ago, when Rangers played Sol- what's her name? Uh, Slavia Prague in the Europa League tie, uh, one of the Rangers players were racially abused and it kicked up a massive thing on social media. Uh, players were then attacked more and more. Um, you know, players like Kamara Roof and Kwai Kamara, and then it was even happening in South to like Kalakaze and Abamyang and stuff. So it was spreading. Um, you know, they, they played at Arsenal and Slavia Prague played the next leg uh, or their first leg last night. Um, and then afterwards, the game, um, after the game, sorry, the racial <laughs> started towards their players. So we kicked in a, uh, at Rangers, we kicked in at least in a way that all players and management staff were asked if they would take a leave for uh, social media uh, as a way of boycotting it so the social media platforms can then so a week, uh, yeah. So it's a week originally. I uh, right. could get prolonged depending on what's what what the outcome is. Um, but basically, you know, platforms like Instagram and Twitter are only taking us like taking enough action. So therefore, a boycott is happening. Um, but with that being said, so Rangers made it a thing where if you know you didn't participate in it, you could be docked wages. Um, and stuff okay. like because Swindon and Brentford had already done that right. um, so basically if you access it um, you're showing you're not showing solidarity towards your player or your fellow right. colleague so therefore it can be deemed discrimination so it was yeah. it was quite mad it was quite deep but it's a good thing I think but, um, yeah I presume they all voted and agreed on this so prior I, to them saying right okay that makes it fine yeah so, they, they, you know, they, they voted in agreement and they said, right, we're happy to do this, blah, blah, blah. And then, obviously, um, it was then put out that if anybody breached the, the you know, the boycott, then you would be punished for it as it's as we've all pre-agreed to. Yeah. So, a week away from social media. Um, to, to be honest, I think it's going to be refreshing for other players. Um, you know, and... I, I mean, you'll, it does, still, does I mean you'll still get folk on social media. I'm not saying they'll be posts and stuff, but you will get folk that will still be, you know, scrolling through, you know, Instagram, potentially, yeah. Facebook, but, TikTok, all that. Um, you know, I think it, I think it defeats the purpose if you do go there, but it could be refreshing to be honest yeah. for a week. Yeah, no, I'm not saying they should do. I'm just saying likelihood is that's what will still happen. Um, so Swindon and Brentford are into their fourth day, I believe, or their third day. One or two, they started either Tuesday or Wednesday. Mm. Um, um, basically, they, they took they took like bigger measurements. So, so they took um, they deactivated accounts for every player, 
and management staff, so all, all accounts were deactivated. Okay. So they can be reactivated and you don't lose nothing, no followers ah, or loss, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, and effectively, if anybody pre-activates an account, um, it, can be, it can be seen. Yeah. So, you know, they've took a bigger stance because they've got a lot of, um, well, in particular, they've got a lot of black players. So, um, Sorry, did know, you say this was for Bradford? No, Brent, Brentford, Brentford and then it was, bad, sorry, yeah. and it was Swindon as well. Was it was the two that I remember seeing? Um, I know, but I, know Swan, I think it's a good thing. Hopefully, yeah. it changes. Uh, I, I've seen as well. Swans they've done a similar thing as well, haven't they? Uh, a, they've they've started it for a week as well. It's good. Yeah. Hopefully, every every club in Scotland and most, if not every club in England, take take it on board as well. I know it's harder for teams such as like your, um, you know, Carlisle and stuff. Players are part time and. Yeah, you know, it's it's trying to make it for them. So social media is a platform in which they want to, you know, they use to grow. Aye, yeah. so it's difficult, but at the same time, you've got to understand that it's a, uh, it's for the right yeah. reasons and yeah. it's for a good th- cause. But it's I think a lot, of, I think a lot of people will see it that way. Thankfully, and plus, you know, I'm not saying they're doing it just primarily to look good. But if you think about it long term, if they are seen as the people in the future that did take this stance when it mattered then they'll be probably rewarded for it going forwards by, you know, those fans that aren't stupid. They'll probably think, oh, well, these people actually do care. Uh, hopefully it does change something, but it's, it's ideally to get Instagram, Facebook and Twitter uh, and all these uh, platforms yeah. to, to take a stance for it as well. As I think big part of it is to get your effort to step up and take their, you know, take a, take action. Um, like, I don't know if you've seen it, but basically the Glen Kamara incident was um, effectively brushed under the carpet. It was basically, he was getting investigated, but then Kamara was getting investigated for serious charges against um, assault. So, their players could be banned for seven games and his, they could, you know, nothing will happen with us. The way, I mean, so at current, the boys banned for one game at the moment, isn't it? Really whilst, right. they, whilst they still investigate. Um, he also yeah. never travelled to England because he would get, hey, because he feared what would happen. Well, I mean, what does it matter if he travelled anyway? He wouldn't be on the fucking. He wouldn't be on the on the. No, bench. I think his bands in the next game though. Ah, I could okay. be wrong, but I think his band was in the next game because yeah. the hearing the hearing was prior to that game. Um, the game and stuff. So um, I think it's the the his actual home tie, the team's home tie. So last oh. night they were in England. Um, and then the reverse legs next week. I mean, if he is guilty of what we time, because I know for Suarez, when he racially abused Evra, it was mm. eight games and like a hundred grand. If I'm right, I might be wrong, but I think that's what he got. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, who knows what you, this boy will get? Because I mean, he's obviously not on prem wages, so it'll probably be something daft like. A couple of games and a twenty grand fine, something like that, which you know will hurt them, but it won't mm. hurt them that much. I know it's um it's hard because obviously I mean even like like, like take it to the most basics of football, you know, the SFA for COVID uh, rules. So bowling goalie left the country, went on holiday, came back, trained with his peers, and then played <laughs> against Kilmarnock. Yeah. <laughs> and got three matches three matches as a ban. Yeah. And then went away to another club abroad because Celtic were too embarrassed to find him. Mm. And then Aberdeen's players went all, went to the pub. Uh, as well as your boys. I uh, got five five matches, wasn't it? Uh three, I think it might have been three. Was it, no, I it, wasn't, quite it was it was definitely made it was five, I think. Five, yeah. So and then Rangers, three players went to a house party and got seven match bans. So it was like, you, the SFA is just guessing where they're, where they're ruling. So if you take it, for example, let's say Glenn Kamara was racially abused in the SPFL, you know, yeah. playing against Hibs mm. on Sunday, whenever, Saturday, whenever the game is. Say he yeah. gets abused there. They'll just guess. Do you know what I mean? You've got to have, you've got to have a, you know, a rule set in stone. I know there's no something you want to put a rule down for because it shouldn't be happening, but at the same time, if you ever go to, if you do this, there's a 50 grand fine fine, and you're banned for the rest of the tournament. Simple as that. 
it's it's one of those things, isn't it, where like especially in like this country, I mean it's always been like a serious issue for like a while gone by now, but it's really become quite a serious issue, you know, in the last sort of like 10, five years sort of thing. It's really mm. been made more aware, especially in the last few years with BLM and certain things like that, especially happening in like America. Yeah. And I think because of that, and I don't want to, you know, give them an easy way out, but I think because they haven't, they haven't moved with the times, if you get what I mean, they haven't thought, right, okay, this should be let play, put in place for if something was going to happen. Yeah rather than wait till if it happens, then do something about it. I make a tit of ourselves as well, but, you know, for me, like, every other Rangers fans I see on social media were like, oh, ban Slavia a prize for the tournament and stuff. Like, no, you can't chuck them at the tournament for one player's actions, mm. but... Because that one player won't with them. Because that one player won't represent the views of every other player at that club. No, and he's, he's, he's got black teammates, do you know what I mean? So it's like, as you, it's just mind blowing that people can can be like that. But regardless of the situation, it should be you know regardless of who you play for or who you're playing against. If you're racist, you're banned for the rest of the tournament. If you're found guilty, simple as that. And a fifty grand fine is the way it should be. You know, and that's it. End of story. Regardless of who you play for or who you're against, and if you can't pay the fifty grand fine, your club is going to go to them pay it. And you know, it's things like that. Because it will soon get cut out of the game if you ban them for the tournament and, you know, you're costing fines like that, so. Yeah. But yeah. they're not do that because they're shy back. Yeah. Unfortunately, but it's just that way as well. It's that ridiculous thing, though. Did you see as well, that's what UEFA were chatting about as well, that it was actually you and that told me about it the other night. One of their, like, refs or linesmen, I think it might have been, was getting autographs from, like, famous players. Not, like, during the game or before the game, but after the game. Um, and he was using these autographs to go and like sell them off for, for um for charity. It's so, like he was yep. selling them whatever the money was he would then give to the specific charities. And UEFA came out making this massive statement of how he shouldn't have been doing this. It was a disgrace, and you know how you might get sacked, sort of thing. It's just like I think you've got bigger issues to cover, especially especially considering the boy's not doing anything wrong. Okay, if he had done it during a match or before a match, it might influence his decision making. But after it, there's nothing that can be done then. So, what yeah. does it matter? I uh, UEFA they they pick on the wrong things. And they, they do with you hear that? I, I can fucking hear it as loud as shit. <laughs> no, that's mental. Um, they just they, they deal with the wrong stuff at the at the wrong times, and just you know, <sighs> something is as serious as you know getting abused, whether it's verbally or physically, that should be the forefront of your your attention. No fucking some cunt taking a signature off our favourite players to then sell off for good causes, you know what I mean? But that's your effort for you, they're, uh, they're scamming bastards. <laughs> Fuck you, effort. that's what I'm saying. And nice to give us Euros tickets. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I still fuck them. <laughs> I'll take it, but fuck you. <laughs> I'll take it, but fuck you. Well, you want to move on to then the more trivial sort of sport and stories? Aye. Um, Jake Paul, have you been asking? I actually can't remember if we've chatted about this at all. I don't think we have, have we? Oh, briefly. Fights on April 17th. No, no, no. I was actually going to ask you, do you want to, do you want to watch it virtually? <laughs> virtually? Uh, uh, so I, I mean, <laughs> so. I, we could, we could do, but... Um... Now, you're obviously a bit more of a fight expert than me. We're both not great, but I think you definitely know a lot more about the sport than I certainly do. Uh-huh. What do you, who do you reckon is going to come out of this best? Uh, based on what I've seen in like, training and sparring sessions that I've, I've watched, because I've been keep up to date with it briefly, um, um, you know, I can I can see nothing other than a Jake Paul win, to be honest. Really? Uh, ben Askins, uh, he's a fighter, though. You know, you get him in the street and you'll kick fuck at a Jake Paul, but in a, in a boxing environment, um, it's, I can only see Jake. You know, if Jake comes out and, he, and he's quick and he's defending some point, he'll know there's a, he'll know there's a fight. But if he's sloppy in any, any point in the game, He's sloppy ways defending. Uh, you know, even if he brings his hands down for a split second, Ben Askren can pounce. We're having that. 
UFC instinct. You know what I mean? You know, a fighting a fighter in the UFC is much quicker to hit you with a jab than somebody in boxing because uh, they prey on we, you know those wee situations in yeah. the UFC. It's the same with Conor McGregor. I don't know if you've obviously seen it, but you know when the Jose Aldo fight and it lasted like yeah. four seconds. <laughs> yeah. That stuff UFC fighters prey on because Jose Aldo missed a punch, dropped his hands, and that was it. It was it was lights out for him. You can't do that against sick. any any UFC fighter. So, but if Jake comes out and he's defending, you know, defensively is is good. Um, they'll win based on what I've seen because Ben Askins punching looks. How many? I made rounds as a, I don't actually know. Do you know? Uh, well, I think it's a I think it's a pro fight still. So, so like twelve. I, no, I don't think they're doing twelve. I think they're doing six three three minute ones. Six three minutes, right? I mean, sure. I suppose that's kind of closer to what Ben will be used to in the UFC in a certain. Uh, so I think that's what they're doing. I, I, I kind of mind, but um, I think it's six three minute ones is what they're doing. But um, it's going to be tough for for both of them because. So you saying right now it's going to be a joke for one? No, I think so. I hundred percent. I. I also agree with you. In I my very, it. very limited boxing slash fight knowledge, I will concede. But <laughs> kind of what you were saying, like I mean, I don't know about box much about boxing, and trust me, if fucking Ben Askin threw those punches at me, I'd probably be wiped the fuck out. But. Right. He, didn't look, he didn't look great on the pads and nah. you know most people can look decent on the pads if it's been edited well is all I'm going to say um, he, he just doesn't use his hip for the punches and that's where he'll <coughs> that's where he'll his downfall will be because he'll, he needs to hit Jake with power the one thing we found out in the last fight with Jake Paul was Jake Paul knocked that gun out and no time at all but he took a punch Um, you know it was too min- minimal uh, but they were <laughs> two punches. <laughs> aye, but it was like they were big. Like, the first one was a massive punch, and he yeah. took it, and you were like, "Fucking hell, all right." And then the second one was a good punch. You were like, "No bother." Yeah. But then that's all he done, and then he looked to cut it, and it was as simple as that. But Ben Ashton's a different type of fighter. Do you know what I mean? This guy's actually got a fighting background. It was the UFC. You know, fighter. So there's a there's a big difference. But aye, if he's punching aye. like that, there's no chance. I think, you know, as much as people hate Jake Paul, I have to say this, from an outsider's point of view, this seems like a very, very smart decision, though. So, of course, everyone was giving him grief for doing this fighting thing, but not fighting a proper boxer. He's still not technically doing that, but, you know, he's fighting an actual fighter now. Yeah. So people give him the respect for that. But I think what people will look past that don't, if they're not involved in the world as much, you know, Ben Askren's, you know, you know, 10 years as senior and has been out of UFC now for, what, two, three years three without years. a fight? Jake Paul's been consistently fighting now for three years, okay? And, you know, Ben Askren's not going into the same sport. His, you know, striking appears to be quite weak. Obviously, things might be different on the night, but it appears that way. And, you know, he seems very laid back about the whole thing, you know, and that might be exactly what he needs, you know, not have a care in the world, just be, you know, just be away with the fairies about it. But it makes you think he's probably not taking it very seriously. And, no. you know, if he isn't, then he might get shocked when he gets fucking hit with one of those blows. You know, because whatever happens, Ben Askin will probably be done after this fight. You know, whether he wins or loses, he probably won't have a career beyond this. Awesome. And you know, one last big payday to get, you know, a few million quid. And I'm not saying, you know, that he'll flop it, but I think he'll have far less of a reason to care about winning than Jake will. And I think yeah. all those things added up means that it's a relatively good PR spin for Jake because he'll probably be up a fighter, which will look good for him and means that he gets to challenge a more higher level of yeah. athlete. And, you know, Ben Askin gets one more good payday. He'll be laughed at, but I doubt he's, he doesn't exactly look like the kind of guy that cares much about what people think. <laughs> so nah, they won't give a fuck. Uh, so, uh, the thing is, this fight is based on one thing for Jake Paul, and it's to get to- Tommy Fury. It's what, it's what he wants. He cares. I don't think he cares. Who? Uh, Jake Paul. I no, nah, I think Jake Paul cares more than you. He may be a little one. If there's one thing I've noticed about Jake is his trash talking is absolutely terrible, right? I don't know if you've seen the press conference between him and Ben Askren, but oh my God, it was terrible. 
I seen the like, slap at the end. So that was. Uh, oh no, the whole thing was terrible. I seen he was man, using Jack, his. <laughs> I seen some of the clips of it from Jack Mates latest video, and it didn't look great. No, he was using thing. his. He was using Logan's partner and stuff. It was just. It was terrible. Um. So not only was his trash talking pathetic, but he kind of hid his emotions. Mm. So. The slap. With, with a slap. But the thing with Tommy Fury is, is he planted the seed. It made it made it known that that was what was the intention, and then hasn't responded at all to Tommy Fury's video at all. Um, the one that was on BBC Sport, um, and I think if he if he beats him, that's so he's going to ask. Well, I'll call it next. I can. Something just tells me. I don't know if he oh. just fights KSI after this. I think though if he loses, he hasn't got a chance of okay, so KSI accepts him anymore. But I wonder nah. if he wins. If he if, if he wins, is he either KSI or see the thing is his ego perceives him like he thinks he's too big for KSI now. So nah, that's but, why but, he, he won't I think the one difference about that is that he's smarmy enough and he wants to fucking get one over someone that's been chatting shit about him for years now. I think right. he's I think he would take the hit. I think he would take a money hit as well just to fight him because he'd be that determined to knock that boy out. <laughs> Maybe. It's either him or Tommy Fury is the next opponent if he, if he wins against Ben Askren. But I think that's sort of like... Uh, Tommy Fury isn't like, you know, he's also... Uh, is he younger than Jake Paul? He might be younger yeah, than Jake Paul. Like, you know, so he's kind of near the start of his career, but let's be real, he's only known for Love Island and the fights that he's had so far, all right, he's looked pretty good but he's not fighting anyone special and I know it's only you know you can fight whoever's in front of you but at the end of the day do you not think this comes back to more of the case of invalidating his career of just like are oh, you only fight you know people that are washed up or reality stars or whatever do you not think he maybe goes for a more serious fighter if he wins this one afterwards when you say KSI is a more serious fighter no no, no 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 not in that sense I don't think I don't think his fight with him anyway would be next if he was to fight. I don't think there's a fighter out there that you could possibly say Jake could go for next to solidify anything that he's done already. Do you know what I mean? I don't think there's a serious fighter out there that's going to be willing to take the hit on their career. Tyson (laughs) Fury. Ah, exactly. I just don't think that's going to happen. So I think he'll need need to focus on a, a KSI or a, you know, a Tommy Fury. If it was me and it was him, and I was him. My next fight by fucking far would be Tommy Fury. You think that's a winnable one? No, I don't think he could. Mm, no, I don't think he could win it. <laughs> but if he does win it, he's better professional boxer who is wee brother of Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King. Like, if you win that fight, you are solidified in boxing history. I suppose even, as well, even you came for YouTube, do you know what I mean? I suppose as well the advantage that Tommy has is not only because he's Tyson's brother, but because he's made himself like a reality star as well. There'll be more clout, I suppose, behind people following him. So you'll get far more attention on the fight than someone of a similar skill level but hasn't done the TV sort of side of the game. Uh, obviously, the, the, you know, the clout fight or the money fight, if you will, is, is definitely KSI. Um, because he'll bring in millions of people. Um, there's no two ways about it. And then the side men will bring in millions of people. And in total, you know, the clout that the UK will have, and even American audience for the side men, and that will that will flood in. So the pay per view will be massive. But with Tommy Fury, it's fucking middle aged women and. You know, young lassies that are going to tune in. Don't get me wrong, guys will obviously tune in based on supporting Jake. All uh, like I would watch it because I want to see Tommy Fury beat him. Do you know what I mean? So then you've got this audience as well. So both are both are big fights, but if you want to solidify yourself as a as a fighter and as a contender, you're taking Tommy Fury all, all week. Fair. But, We'll see what happens in the, the Ben Askin first, but I, back to your original point, he's going to beat Ben Askin, I believe. Yeah, I'm also in agreement, unfortunately, but I think I'm going to watch this one just as just in case there's a chance he gets better. 
to that. Like, like there's about like thirty percent of me that believes he might get battered. So I'll watch it just for that case. If he gets, if he gets hit with, a, if he gets hit with a combo, he'll be <laughs> fucked. But based on his previous fights, and he's been hit with about eight punches in total. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see it. I think the most punches he received was against Gibb, and it was a. Um, and that was a Gibb. I it was Gibb, and that was the, the most punches he's ever received. And you've seen how that fight turned out. So, yeah. Is this one? Is this one got head guards, or is it pro? The Ben Askren one's pro. Mm. Speaking of one though that might not be pro, <laughs> YouTubers be <me> TikTokers. <laughs> oh, so well, no, isn't it pro? It's got head guards on it. Yeah. Um, which when is, is that actually? Uh, isn't that in April as well? No, it's the 25th of June, I think, or something. Is it? Is it that far ahead? Uh, that far away, do you mean? Yeah. 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 So, I believe so. So, those that don't know, um, you know, it's all about Boxing Day. There's a uh, 5th of June, you are correct. On the 5th of June, <laughs> there is the um, classic TikTokers v YouTubers going into another boxing fight. Doesn't Reminds me a wee bit of fame MMA, but we'll look past that. <laughs> no. Just to me, it's uh, it's just a fucking, it's an embarrassment, to be honest. But <laughs> you think? Uh, I just think it's so hard. You know, they're just trying to copy the the whole YouTube scene, like with the KSI and stuff. I just yeah. find it dead embarrassing, but um, right. it'll, um, it'll, it'll make money, I suppose. <laughs> I'm not a TikTok. I'm not a big fan of TikTok, as I've said to you on this before. But do you like? Also, you watch a bit of it. Do you actually ken any of the names on these things? No. I've heard, yeah, because I've heard a lot of people that like watch TikTok have like not got a clue who these people are. I've heard of your Bryce Halls. I've heard of Taylor Holder. Yeah, so I've heard of Bryce Hall based off the fact that he used to go with Dixie Demille or some shit. Well, the only thing I've heard about him is that he's a likes to bar folks. So, I mean, you know, it goes well with his personality about doing a boxing fight. And then, I mean, on the YouTube side, you know, you've got Deji, KSI's brother, um, mm-hmm. against uh, Vinny Hacker. Fuck not sure he is. Fuck knows. <laughs> I got Comedy Shorts Gamer. Um, <laughs> Austin McBroom, again, fucking wet wipe family vlogger, <laughs> YouTuber. It's actually difficult to see who I'd least like to win on the main card of that. And then you've got Danny Duncan, which, to be fair, I respect. I like Danny Duncan. I think he's funny as fuck sometimes. I don't know who he is, but I like the name. Um, I can't, like, back when I was in uni, I don't know how, but me and um, one of my mates, when we were just, like, randomly scrolling to YouTube, like, on the homepage, we found, like, his video. Well, I'm going to tell you I was in the podcast now. <laughs> nah, well, I'll speak to you after, right? Aye, uh, nah, we, um, with Daddy Duncan, we found, like, one of his videos when he had, like, 200,000 subscribers sort of thing, and, like, he's, he's a bit, like, I don't know what's the way to describe him, like Jackass and TGF sort of thing, but American. Okay. Um, sort of similar, a wee bit to Logan Paul as well. Like, sort of imagine those sort of three <laughs> sort of things mixed together. Yep. Um, so he's quite funny. Um, Faze Jarvis, I've, I mean, he's Shit. always on the fucking, he's always on the homepage, but I've never fucking watched a Faze video before. Um, and Tara Fox, I've heard of as well, but not right. seen any videos of. I've only seen, I've only seen him because his expert was uh, a fucking roaster. <laughs> uh, and it was Taylor Alicia or Tay Alicia, whatever. And uh, he made a song. I can't remember what it was. It was like Distant Someday, I think. And she was in it, and that's the only reason I know them. Fair enough. Right. The question is, though, do you care <laughs> for what for the for the event? Yeah. No, couldn't give a fuck. I think the only the only thing I want to happen is obviously Deji wins. Um, when is it actually? Out of curiosity, when is it? Just, no, like where is it? Like where's oh, it Miami, been? I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it'll be another fucking five in the morning fight, so I can't be asked for that. Oh, uh, exactly. Um, but no, I mean, here's a here's the issue. Our face, right? It's, it's a bunch of ways. <laughs> Uh, fighting a bunch of ways, um, and the only one I really actually want to win is Deji. Um, and it's because I, I truly believe Deji can, can box, he's just a, 
lazy bastard. Um, so, other than that, I couldn't give a fuck. I want Austin McBroom to lose because he's a fucking total knob. Um, so is that a Bryce Hall? Maybe they'll both knock each other out. That'd be fun. Uh, just it's like one punch, you know, each. Right. <laughs> just um, but I, other than that, no, I couldn't give a fuck what happens. I'll not watch it. Um, <laughs> I, I hope maybe does. I might. I'll see what time it's on and then I'll see if I can legally watch it. <laughs> You're a wet cunt. I hope nobody watches it. I hope they didn't get money for the fucking event. I hope they lose money on the event because of how embarrassing it is. It is. So, like, for those obviously that don't know, like, back when I suppose the box and hype's kind of coming back if this is happening, Jake Paul's fighting against happening, but like... the thing Where's about Jake's it, fight again, though? What? When's Jake's fight again? April 17th. So next week. Yeah. Um yeah. the thing about this so like it reminds me entirely of Fame MMA, you know, which was does that for those that don't know, that was another event that was sort of spark to sort of what was it like ride on the coattails of the KSI Joe Weller fight. Um and yeah, it went terribly. They didn't pay their creators. They lost, you know, hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of pounds. The event was a shambles, all because they kind of rushed it and tried to do a carbon copy, which wasn't smart. Um, the one thing that potentially maybe gives me a bit more hope about this is obviously they might have had time to learn from mistakes like that, and make it into a proper event. But I would get past them for it being a fucking disaster. And I don't know how much it's going to cost, but am I fuck paying for it? No, no. Um, <laughs> let me see, because there's a... I want to check something now that you've mentioned the, the time on it. So Josh Taylor is the fighter for Scotland. Yeah. He is a... Uh, it was... I think he's for Edinburgh or something. And I want to see if his next fight is... Oh, no, it's not. So he's fighting Ramirez next Saturday, the 22nd of May, 2021. So I thought he... I, for some reason, I thought it was April as well, and I thought, fuck me, no chance he's undercard of that. All right. Well, you um, see if he was the undercard. <laughs> I, well, I don't know who's on the card for the Jake Paul and that, but... Uh, if it was somebody like Josh Taylor, I'd have been fucking, I'd have been well pissed off. But <laughs> thank, thank God it's not. Because uh, what what do you make it right? Because obviously the question was bad ages and ages ago of, um, you know, boxing fanatics hated the idea of YouTubers crossing into their their world and stuff. What what do you make it as as somebody that's not an avid boxing fan, or you know, you, you know, when they say that you're. You know, you're not certainly not no, I, I mean, I would. I am the most casual fucking boxing fan you'll ever see. I will watch the big fights if I'm in a pub and it's on. I will watch it and I will enjoy it. But that's as far as my, as far as my sort of repertoire goes. So, what do you make of the whole idea that I'm crossing over platforms? And it's good, and they're thick to think otherwise that it's not good. Like people don't care. Like a lot of people and the younger generations do not care about boxing, this is a way to get them interested. Like it or not, like this is the way that you make people interested in the sport again. For the last 10 and 15 years, all everyone has give a shit about is MMA, apart from the one time that fucking Conor McGregor fight fought um, Floyd Wayweather. Before that, no one gave a fuck about boxing for the last 10 years. And it's only when YouTubers have came into the ring and started doing double the numbers of some of these big fights that people like it. Now, I get what people are saying about, you know, the whole integrity of sport, but don't be a fucking wet wipe. As you said, like, you wouldn't care if, fuck, you don't, people don't care when soccer aid comes on or... YouTubers do like a football event, you know, like sort of thing. It's good because it gets the casual fan into it and it gets new people that maybe don't know anything about the sport interested again. I was never fucking, you know, I'm going to sit here and sound like the ultimate fan, though, but I didn't care before fucking Conor McGregor was in MMA. I got into it because of his personality and him, you know, doing well at fighting. 
in the same way that if you know you're an eight year old kid that doesn't have any hobbies or whatever, but you see your favorite TikToker just knock someone out, you might think, do you know what? Actually, that's cool as fuck. I want to go down and just you know go down to the local box and club and learn. You should be embracing it. You shouldn't be treating it like it's a club for only special people. You should be wanting more people into it. And, you know, I get the whole thing of, you know, like, oh, uh, you know, the more people might ruin it or whatever. But at the end of the day, right, you're a dying sport. And if you want to see it improve, there has to be more people interested. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's like my wee cousin's uh, boyfriend, he was totally against the idea. It was like, you know, these fighters have trained for since we're we guys to become these boxers and stuff, some don't get chances and all that. And then there's these YouTubers just walking into chances. Yeah. And it's like it's no the case. It's um you know, it's like what's his what's his face? Fucking Ben Foster, who's a goalkeeper for years and years and years, just starts up a YouTube career and he's done better than people that's been grinding it for five years. Like, yes, he's using his fame to boost in other departments, yeah. but it's like, any sl- it's like when yeah. any celebrity starts up a YouTube channel, you always see a boost at the start because of their presence. Like, yeah, but then afterwards it will tail off if it's if they're actually not a good YouTuber. Like, yeah, exactly. so that'll be great. Like, yeah, like Will Smith, for example. Will Smith, at a point, and I will still stand by this, like a few years ago, made some of the best YouTube videos there were out there. Was that him that done that? Was it fuck? <laughs> he clearly had a team of however many doing it. And his videos are great for a while. But see, once people, like, see, once you stop keeping up with regular uploads because you have other commitments, you can't do it. Ben's obviously okay. used his profession to be able to keep filming, which is what's helped him plus his personality. Aye. And I think it's, just, it's similar to the, you know, the idea of, um, you look at JFA, TGF, like he's massive, he's been on the news fucking more times than I'd like to imagine, but then he jumped over to boxing and he's never done it again because it's not for everybody. But yeah. the, the thing is, for, for people like your, um, for like your Jake Paul, he's proved himself, whether you want to believe it or not, he's proved himself in a professional aspect. Yeah. Uh, he's 2 and 0 professionally or 3 and 0 now. Nah, 2 and 0 still. Yeah. Um, and he's got an amateur record that's undefeated as well. And, you know, granted, you know, as an amateur, you might go 19 and 0 before you even become a professional. And then once you became a professional, you then get your bigger fights and then you might become, you know, even even better. And then professionally you go 10-0 and, and then you get your first loss or you go undefeated. But whether you come into the sport halfway through your life or at the very start, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. it, you can do whatever you want. And, and, and people so are saying this... People are saying as well, right, like, you know, all these people are coming in and taking, like, the spotlight away from, like, these people that have grinded years to make it, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry, right, but see if you're as dull as a fucking plank, right? You weren't going to get noticed anyway, right? The reason why these people have gone on to do it and do it well, you know, like them or not, is because of their personalities as well. You can't be... Can, like look back at boxing all the years ago, you know, you look at your um Chris um fucking the boy that wears the monocle. Um oh I can't remember his name now. Um when it wears what? The monocle, you know. Black boy from um black boy from England. Chris um either way, right? You look at people wow. like you look at people uh, Chris Eubank, sorry. I would say Eugene, but I don't know why that was stuck in my head. I think that maybe his middle name. But you look like at Chris Eubank. when he talks like soft. You talk about like Chris Eubank. You talk about your Mike Tyson's. You talk about your Allies. These people are remembered not just because they were great fighters, because they were also great personalities as well, right? Mm. And that's what you need to be in this. That's what you need to be now, Nowadays, especially. Yeah. Even then, like, why are these people remembered and other great fighters aren't? It's because they had the personality to back it up. Mm. you know that's why that's why I don't believe people when they're saying oh you know they're not giving these guys a chance no I mean like okay you might only be in the sport for boxing because you love it and that's great that's very admirable but in that case you would literally have to be the best in the world to get the attention that these people Aye, get 100%. otherwise you have to utilize other avenues and if you can't accept that 
then you have to accept then that you're going to be at the level you're going to be for the rest of your life. Fair or not, that's how life works. Yeah, 100%. Just know if I was a boxer, I'd make it based on the personality because it's... Ah, I mean, they say the, they'd say the podcast, they'd be like, damn, incredible. But he's fucking oozing my personality. He's oozing oh, me something, that's right. <laughs> aye, but raw sex appeal. But uh, aye, it's an interesting uh, observation, the whole YouTubers crossing into boxing and, you know, that will happen vice versa at some point. You might know not about it, but... No, it's, yeah, it's bear in mind as well, right? We've gone a full year without something massive happening on YouTube or entertainment wise. You know, people want to see, people want to be entertained by something again. That's what I want. I want fucking, I want something to look forward to again. Nice. I've not had something to look forward to now for a year. I want, I want like a reason to be like, oh shit, there's going to be a fight. Do I really want to see Jake Paul win? No, but it might be entertaining nonetheless. Nah, see, you're a, you're, mate, this is a, you're a loser, do you know what I mean? Like, Tyson Fury and that's been confirmed that as a fight. That's something to look forward to. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It's something to look forward to. I'm talking about nothing's happened this year, last year, though, to keep us you know, aye, excited. Aye. It's things like that being confirmed, you know, like as well, like the Euros coming up, the Olympics, things like that. They go, yes, there's something to look forward to now. Um, but yeah, moving on, because I really don't want to put fucking Jake Paul in the title of a YouTube video again, but it looks like we might have to. Um, Nico and Milana and that Max Fosh running for Mayor of London. Mm-hmm. What's your so, thoughts? It's just a meme, isn't it, really? Yeah. I know he's taking it seriously, but it's it's a meme. It's something that's, one, it's not going to happen. But two, if he even gets top five, I'll be gobsmacked. But um, it's interesting. It's, you know, because it's, it's weird because I watched one of his uh, videos and it brings up so much good points. And it makes you think he's got a team behind him. So uh, if it, if it, Nico, Nico. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, say say he does get it somehow that he gets a lot mayor of London. Um, that he's got a team there to back him with with actual things that needs to be done. But to me, that just blows my fucking mind. Do you know what I mean? But um, uh, it's it's funny. It's a meme. Um, at the at the at the absolute. Most oh yeah, no, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's funny. I have to say, yeah, like I was watching Max Force, like the other person that's running for it. Like I think that funny as fuck. The whole reason they started doing it was because um, the one of the guys, Lawrence Fox, that's doing it was basically, you know, he's not got any credible reason of being a mayor. He's got he's done, never done anything in politics before. Uh, but because it's had like back and that's why he's going for it. So Max is like, well, yeah, I've got 300,000 subscribers. I've got back and it might not be in money form, but you know, I, I'm just as qualified as you sort of thing, no. which I find quite funny. Um, they did, he did actually make a good point though. Like, so to apply for Mayor London, right, you have to put down a 10 grand deposit, right? But you only get your 10 grand back if you get the equivalent of 5% of the votes. So obviously Nico will have had to do the same as well, but 10 grand, right? So five uh, percent rather of the vote. They said in the last mayor election there was only three people that got above five percent of the vote. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's very unlikely that they'll get the money back from this. But or or, or he wins it. <laughs> oh yeah, oh Christ, could you imagine? <laughs> if they won Aye, it. That would be nuts. It would break, it would literally break them on that. The third is right. You're in, you're living in London, right? The vote comes May the sixth. Would you vote for them? Because although it is like I mean, there's very little chance they would win, and if they did win, what would happen? Sort of thing. So would you? I'd vote for I hundred percent. I'd take the punt. Why not? Because if it happens, it's like fuck it. We, we all don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, um, especially. <laughs> and then at the same time, if it doesn't win, it's like was your vote really going to affect doing it? Anyway, is the way I always see it. So, um, you know, I, I would certainly take the, the punt for the banter, but, uh, you know, and I hope he does win it just for the for the shits and gigs, but uh, I can't I can't see it, but it would be fucking, it would be a rare delight if he did win it. Would yeah, you vote him? Um, I don't know which one would I vote, though, is the question. <laughs> I'd, I'd vote Nico because I, ch- I watch his videos and I like the beta squad and chunks and all that, I'm a big fan. So 
I would vote I would for him. Pro- I would probably only vote for Fosh on the because re- I like both their content, but I probably only vote for Fosh on the reason that his his point to prove is something that like he's got a reason behind it, if you like. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Nico is also just doing it for the band, so I'd like to see his point, you know, be proved. And you know, Nico's gonna have a lot more people that vote from anyway, so you know. Aye, it's uh, it is dead interesting. I was watching, um, so obviously the Simon Sunday shoot happened. Uh, you know, the very recent Simon Sunday that was oh, got the filmed, golf one. The golf one. Yeah. So I, I always watch Con's videos. Oh, the behind the scenes. Yeah, aye, I love them. Um, Aye, so they're great. Um, did you see when they... Yeah, I pulled up to, pulled the, up fake to, the, Starbucks, to yeah. the fake Starbucks. To the fake Starbucks. There's just so much stuff that that Nico brings to YouTube that people... No, no you in particular, but like people don't realise. Um, his content's amazing, but uh, the Starbucks underneath the cups, which I, it wasn't in the video that Con done, underneath the cups, it says, uh, vote Nico. Uh, uh, but like so it's very it's a weird position to put it though under the cup yeah but it's it's subtle hints so yeah. i thought it was just funny as fuck but um it wasn't in con's video it wasn't until later on i seen it it was a uh, nico tweeted it out. it was like you know this video and he was the cops blah 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 but uh mm. i say uh, it's dead interesting and uh, i hope he does win it for the for the banner one thing I did have a question of, now, obviously, we live in a place that's not as significant in the world, nor as big, you know, being in Stirling and that. But, you know, we obviously have our own mayors, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm wondering, it's like, you know, like the mayor of London, you know, it's always talked about, you know, he's making these decisions, he's doing this and that, all that sort of thing. Do the mayors in Scotland not do like that, if you get me, do they not make decisions about, like, political I issues? Or... I couldn't tell you who our fucking mayor is. Yeah, well, well I mean, that's a sh- sh- joy to Google it. <laughs> Go for it, aye. See, see if he's represented by someone, but... Is a like, mayor, like, the same as an MP, though? Like, your MP in your district, is that not the same thing? N- no, I think we have an actual mayor, uh, so we have um, Mayor Mark Irwin, um, he's been in since 2017 and he gets to run until 2023. Right, so he's obviously doing a good job. So who's uh, who's uh, MP for the Stalin? Um, hold on. Um, MP Stalin. Is it still? It's not the fucking... Uh, no, it's not that well. Uh, it's Alan Smith. Yeah, I forgot he came in the Welsh guy. Anyway, um, so... So like he so makes ma- a decision. Oh, he doesn't. He like no. So like, the mayor of Stalin, will, he will like be somewhat head of the council. I would imagine. Like, do yeah. you know what I mean? like he would, he'll make decisions like that. Right. And he'll get passing. Like so, say their road what's are going to happen here, here, and here. Road closures. It will need to go through him. Do you know what I mean that? That's what it will be like. Aye, miniature so like miniature. Yeah. So like small local issues. Aye, and if he needs funding for this. He'll yeah, be the probably. man you go to, and then he'll get it off his high and yeah. so forth. But like yeah. London and Mayor will obviously make bigger decisions, and yeah, no, I obviously I know that's why. I'm just wondering because you never hear about obviously like mayors making decisions like here, mm-hmm. but you always hear about like the mayor of London has commissioned psychopaths or something like that. Just to know uh, if we had the same sort of laws. Uh, so that would be the similar, um, similar. So like if we wanted a psycho lane and. The Joe Cash we're going to the test was like there would be the mayor who would yeah mm. would would uh, pass that but uh, it's it's weird to it think. works. Jenny works at the council building or he works at like um, I think he'll just work Park. remotely now. Probably now. Probably just, he, well, he's wearing a big fancy fucking um, not key. What do you call it? Like um, like fancy outfit. I'm just picturing. Him well, just what's the what's the <laughs> what's the the political house he's still in? Um, it's still um, it's SNP at the moment, I think. Right, so where 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 are they based? Or where's uh, where's the house? Oh, where's their local like office? I, I would imagine we'd work there, no? Maybe. I always thought though they worked at the um, you know, beside the toll booth, that very old building that used to be the um, the council building. Maybe. Didn't know if it, didn't know if he weren't there or either way. It's a very pointless issue. I was just curious more than anything. Aye, very true. Aye. Yeah, you learn something new every day. 
one other though I did want to bring up to you, so Mary, there's no segue, I can't think of how to make this work, right? Mm. But, you know, I'm someone that, you know, I've never, well, no, I have actually in the past, but I'm someone that tends to keep, like, old consoles, right? Like, older, I've got older stuff in my house, you know, I am a boomer. Ah, the segue is easy then. So from one old bastard mayor uh, to, the, to uh, another old bastard. Right, right. See, easy peasy. That's, that's why you make 50% of the commission. Right. Easy peasy, <laughs> then your grannies, but right, as you were saying. What so you the keep... fuck was that? <laughs> no, you know, you know, you never seen that video, the mad Scottish guy. Oh, like, yeah, no. Do you know no, what I'm talking about? Yeah, no, I was so fucking confused what you meant. Right. No, <laughs> that's, a, that's a fucking belter of a video. I've seen that again <laughs> the other day. But, um... Nah. Aye, so you keep old consoles. Aye, nah, nah, like, I've got old consoles, you know, and I occasionally enjoy playing them, you know, sort of reminiscing. Do you, like, keep any of, like, old consoles? No. You got none of them at all? No. So, like, no old games you hold, like, special to you? T- tell you what, I-, I wish, honestly, right, and if anybody has a PS3 and they're willing to give me it, I'd take it off your hands 100%. That's, like, one of the few that I don't have. How come so, you want a PS3? Because it's got Black Ops 1 on it, and Black Ops 1 is the best game ever invented, so... It's literally as simple as that. You think any of the servers are still going? <laughs> I fucking do it. I hope so. I think but, they stopped PS3 networks now that the PS5's come out. Probably. But I will fuck them. But um, no, nah, so like, I had, so I've had an Xbox way back in the day. Like what, an the original the, Xbox? Very original, the black one eye. Yeah. Used to Got play Halo and that. Yeah. Used to play Halo and that all the time. Mm-hmm. Um. And then I went for that to a PS3, and then I've had a PS3 to a PS4. Poor mistake. Should have got an Xbox 360. Not in the slightest. That's in total embarrassment for you. Nah, you're the fucking embarrassment. Listen, I have none yet. Shut the fuck up. Uh, So, literally, in terms of, you know, consoles, if you will, I've got a PS4, and that's it. And I've got, obviously, my PC, which isn't a real console, but it's... It's there anyway, electronic device, if you will. Um, I've had a PS5. Sold it. Uh, but no, I've still I mean, got to be fair, there's no real games for it out still at the moment, is there? No, I mean, Dylan's got a PS5, but, but it runs it runs shit hot, obviously. Yeah. Um, but no, nah, there's nothing. Like, I'll get it maybe in like a year's time or something like that. Oh, when it's like 400 quid. <laughs> aye, like, that's, when I'll, that's when I'll invest in something like that. But right now, the PS4 is still kicking, so we'll, we'll keep it. Yeah. I've, um, I've still got one. That, I've still got the first PS4 that came out. It still actually runs very well. It's a big fat bastard, or was it there? Uh, it's not very fat. It's pretty slim, but it's, it's like the one. It's, yeah, but the biggest problem is only it's a five hundred terabyte. So of course, like, I can have about five hundred gigabyte one. Five hundred gigabyte. Sorry, yeah. Five hundred terabytes. I'll take it. I'll show uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I've had that fucking thing since well, twenty fourteen they came out. So. I can't even believe you've got a PS4 and you've not downloaded Warzone on it to play with us. Got Warzone on the Xbox. I bet that's the embarrassing point. Like that means we need to go on Discord or Game Chat to actually talk to you. Here's what you're doing after this podcast. You're loading up the PS4 uh, and you're downloading Warzone on it. I want to be able to have FIFA on it, so absolutely not. I, no, I could give no. less of a fuck. No, look, okay, I will admit, right, the X, well, no, the Xbox was a good and bad decision, right, because for one, my PlayStation 5's memory is far too small, so I can't have too many. PlayStation 4? PlayStation 4. It's got, numbers, it's got a fucking, it's far too small, like, I can't store any games on it. So, and I bought the Xbox as a treat because I just finished the uh, university and I was like, do you know what, fuck it, I'm going to treat myself and get myself a console. So every other like game that hasn't been like the new FIFA or like did you feel university or something like that's not a cheat. Uh, it's like listen, uh, listen, it was a rare point in my life, Jamie, where I had some money kicking about that I didn't need. So I, and it was a total waste. I feel sorry no, for I'm, you. I've play, I've spent my time playing Warzone. So no, it's been good. Talk, talk to me. So uh, what games are you going to PS4? Installed currently. Yes. Uh, Cold War. Uh, FIFA and UFC. Right, so delete fucking UFC and then get. Even Warzone. if I delete UFC, it's not going to fucking install. You are full of shit. Warzone's like a Buy a hard drive that's game. fucking 10 quid. Simple as that. Stop complaining. Honestly. Well, you can buy me one then. How about that? <laughs> Aye, how's about something my bug, Bobby? <laughs> it's, a, it's an embarrassment, the fact that you're no. You're no partaking in getting Warzone in the correct fucking 
console. But you know Tell what, what you buy me a one terabyte PS4 then. How about that? <laughs> no, I'm alright. Uh, stay on your Xbox. No, you never. Stay, stay on Sell your my Xbox. Xbox. I got about 100 quid for it. No, I said <laughs> stay on your Xbox. You can uh, keep it. Right, yeah. I could just play with that. Yeah, no, nah, we will do. But So, like, is that your favourite game then? All time fucking Black Ops 1. Um, that or Black Ops 2. Mm. I enjoy Black Ops 3 as well. But, like, so be, right, the way I work out, right, is Black Ops 1, I had the most fun and I met the most people that I still talk to nowadays, right? right. Um, PS, eh, sorry, Black Ops 2 had the best rank system I've ever seen. And I enjoyed it more because it was more competitive. And that's when I started watching like the proper COD events and stuff. And then Black Ops 3, I was just good at and I enjoyed it. But like the best game I've ever been good at is Advanced Warfare. Like I was Oh I fucking hate games. Like no, nah, you would struggle anybody would struggle to beat me on Advanced Warfare. I was amazing at it. That was sort of the jetpacks, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. That's that was the movement. That's the uh that's a very infamous night that you've just reminded me of. <laughs> Honestly, the best game. What, prob- you know something? The, the, by far the best game I was ever. Do you, do you remember that one night that we played on it together? When mm-hmm. I had... <laughs> so again, another segue. But, um, so my mum used to have like, one night shifts and I'd have to play to myself sometimes for like, a day or two at the weekends like, to myself. Oh, yeah, um, too. Yeah, and also, like, normally, you know, to have mates rounds for, you know, a couple of drinks or whatever. Um, however, this time, it was only Fergus free, and this was just as I was, like, becoming mates with Fergus, so I invited him round. And this was a- just after my first New Year's party I'd had, so, like, it's, like, a month after it, something like that. Um, and I still had uh, two litres of vodka under my bed from that night. Um, and you and me were just playing on fucking Advanced Warfare because I must have got it for Christmas or something. Um, and you know that way just like when you're drinking you're just like you know you're not really paying attention just chatting shit going through Aye. before I realised that I was entirely through a full one litre bottle of vodka and Fergus hadn't even arrived yet so then Fergus arrived <laughs> and then obviously I was like oh you want to drink but he didn't drink at this point or didn't drink much at this point so he was like nah it's fair I'll leave it so I just kept going must have got through about another half a bottle. <laughs> and then I have, and then at that point, right, I was so drunk, right, that I couldn't, I was trying to take my t shirt off because I was trying to be sick. I couldn't physically take my t shirt off. And then I was so drunk, I couldn't even use my own legs to stand up. I just kept like stand up and then falling down and bashing myself <laughs> off the ground. And, <laughs> and poor Fergus was having to look after me the all night after he was invited around, just <laughs> wobbling, wobbling around. I could, like, my mum had, like, a couch, which, you know, it must have been, like, must have been, like, two feet off the floor, if that. And I was, like, using all my strength to, like, try and sit up to, like, sit on the couch. Couldn't do it, just, like, <laughs> lying on the ground, tap off, spewing everywhere. <laughs> Loving it. Shocking. Uh, but do you know what the best bit about that was? Woke up bright and early at 8am and he hang over and just was like, you're right. And he looked at me with disgust and shock and was just like, how, how are you alive? <laughs> what, um, what, what, somewhat back on it there, so what, what's, what's your favourite like, favorite game all the time? Favourite game? I think I had potentially my best memories in GTA Five. Um, some game, some game. Like, um, like back in the early days on like the Xbox 360 and then for a bit on the PC um, then as well also fucking loved Halo 3 growing up as a bairn that was back good fun game as well. um, FIFA 12 the only FIFA I've ever been <laughs> decently ranked at so that was nice <laughs> I play, I, mate, I, I, I never had that as my favourite game do you know that? never no, I, I fucking loved FIFA 12 more than anything. I used to, at one point, I was like, uh, was it, for how long was it for? You remember back in the day when, like, on the front of FIFA, I don't know if, they, I don't think they did more, they used to have, like, world rankings, and then it used to be, like, region and all that sort of thing. Yeah. I was in the top 10 of uh, for, in the UK for one day. Happy memories. Oh, Happy fucking memories. Uh, n- never let that go. 
Mate, it's never it's my best, <laughs> mate, it's my best g- game with him, and I managed to go like 350 games undefeated. Also, not like winning them all, but like wins and draws and that. See, I, that's like me. Like, everybody always talks about like, oh, I, like, why we use, like, why, how can you say we're good at advanced warfare? I was number one in the world for like three weeks at my uplink. Yeah. Like the game mode uplink, I was number one in the world for like, well, I don't know how long it was, for like three weeks, a month, I don't know, but like, that'll never be topped. Yeah. And it's just like that's the best I've ever been at a video game is FIFA 12. Um, Forza 3, um, I used to be big into my car games when I was younger. Um, Forza 3, I completed like five times 100%. Completed it, mate. <laughs> mate, completed. literally, I completed it. Um, so I love that. Would it be GTA? I think GTA may be on the balance. I've just had my best memories on it, like, sitting up to sh- like spending stupid hours on it, just like doing dumb Aye, shit. We used to do all nighters on Black Ops 1, fucking zombies, and just all sorts. Of, that was a good time. Black Ops 2 was like, like I said, it was just where I was in my proper competitive. Like, I wanted to become as good as I could at COD, and then Advanced Warfare came up the next year, and then that's when I grinded it, and I was like, unbelievable to the game. And then I got so bored, it been so good, that the next again year, I just, I played it casually again, so yeah. I wish I never done yeah, that. Yeah, it's the point where you play games too much. I mean, like, I was never someone that played games as much, despite having, you know, fucking quadruple the consoles a year, I've never been someone that plays games as much as you. Advanced yeah. Warfare could have been the time. If I had the right setup, if I had like a monitor on the, a good controller on the camera, I would have started a channel now, but and probably could have done something with it. But because I was actually amazing at that game, but then the next again, it was like I was that good at that game for that whole last year and I gained nothing out of it. So I was like, oh. well, it's number one in the world, but like, it's, it's that thing though, isn't it? Where like, you know, like, I mean, I've only ever been great in one game, and that was FIFA 12, like I said. I've been half decent at a couple of other games, but I've never been great at another game again. Mm. And it gets that point where, you know, you can always, well, for me at least, I can only spend so much time now playing on a game and no getting bored. You're a proper casual gamer if I've ever seen one. Mm. Oh, no, that's why I still play console. That's the thing though, like, see when like all my mates like start getting PCs and that, that's when it felt like it really, like, I lost the fun of it, if, I, if you get what I mean. Mm. <laughs> Never get that same feeling of jumping on Xbox 360 and seeing like all your mates like in a party or online and just sitting yeah. apart and chat shit for hours. Yeah. It's embarrassing, PC gamers, fuck them. I know, absolute wet wipes. Fucking fuck you, you. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, fucking installing shaders. What a pathetic excuse. <laughs> fucking wank. No, but see on my on my PlayStation 4 right now, it's see my you know how you could change like your theme, your background on the ah. because of mine's just still the advanced warfare. Huh? <laughs> You're really right. laughing in your moment of glory, aren't you? Like, it's, I love that game. But I uh, no. Games um, it's it's uh, it's aye. Uh, there you go. Actually, you have just reminded me now that I'm looking over at my games. I do fucking love as well the old James Bond games. I used to play them. Like, they were not, good. I had quite, I had a... Uh, um, what did I have? I got Lewis, quite, who, Lewis, who was on this pod before, whatever, like, because we used to spend so much time at each other's houses. He always had uh, Nightfire. Just used to bang that uh, and try to snipe each other. You know, obviously, didn't really achieve much being probably about six or that. Can you fucking move the controller properly? Some games, though, so there were some games. Mm. I that. was fucking useless. Like, even more so as a kid, I was fucking useless at games. Like, I know that thing of, like, games are harder back in our day, but, like, some games are fucking really hard to remember. Uh, kids. I used to find the Bond game solid, but, like, I was, I could never complete missions first try, you know that? I was, yeah, no, I, and that, you know, they was fucking from my controller, then, but fucking never going to complete it. <laughs> Fuck you. And then, and then, of course, you couldn't fucking YouTube it, tutorial yourself how to do it. Only back in the day, man. Fuck sake, it was actually, that was, times were tough by then. I know. You have to go into game. Yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't do this, but people that actually care more would go because I would get frustrated and never play the game again. Whereas people that are actually meant to complete it <laughs> went to like I remember the big books and all this that. This was a cracker. What year was the first? What was the first year that Ultimate Team came out? Oh, uh, like uh, FIFA 11, I think it may have been. Right, I think it was like, I basically played that, right? And so I played all my games and stuff until my players had any fitness contracts left. Oh my God, fucking fitness contracts and right. being in existence. No, hear me. I thought that was the end, like, because I didn't know how to get any more. 
So I was like, oh, well, that's a waste of fucking, what's the point of the team if you, but what? Never played it again. <laughs> Honestly, didn't know what he did. And it wasn't until like FIFA 14 or 15 or something, somebody was like, are oh, you buying them on the market? I was like, no. Nah. You sure? I'm like, he's like, aye. I'm like, you're oh. a fud. You're a fud. So I was like, I never ever played it for like years and years. So like FIFA That's 16 and 17 bad. and 18, that was the years I played the Ultimate Team again. But like, it was mainly Pro Club back in the day for me. Yeah. I mean, we've had some good and bad luck over the years in Pro Club. I've, I've, I mean, I've always been amazing at them, but I don't know what you mean. I, uh, uh, I don't know. The boy never really done much success in this, all I can say. <laughs> what did you say? It was constant dubs for me, man. That was the greatest on that game. Uh, Still am. Mm. <laughs> well, that was a good way. Nostalgia trip, I suppose. Um, yeah. Is there anything you want to add? No, no. I mean, we're just going to... We've uh, covered everything that all I want to cover, so it's um, mm. been eventful. Yeah, well, 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 I mean, next week we should have a guest, but um, me and Jamie are currently going to discuss about what to do for that next week. So until then, I suppose, I've been Liam White. I've been Jamie Allen. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye. We're down the football and current events Sitting and chatting with the very best guests We're two Scottish boys and we're loving it So if you like witty banter Check the former number one podcast on iTunes Sitting and chatting